Hey guys, welcome back to Fable Stand, and this is Kim. Um, guess what? I just did my first live video. Uh, well, it's technically not my first because I went live in other people's groups and also one of the groups that I'm like admin, ad admin in. But that was my first time going live in my own Facebook group, Level Up Tarot. I did an intuitive reading for, for the upcoming week. So if you want to check it out, go check it out. It's really great. Um, and yeah, that was like super nerve wracking, but it was so, I feel so good now. Like, you know, I'm so glad I did it. I, I need to do it more to interact with my followers and my peeps and awesome people like you. So if you're not already in there in the group, you should totally come join because there's like lots of like great tarot exercises. Uh, we're going to be focusing on intuition next month uh, in, in, in October. So make sure you come join and it's just like lots of fun stuff about tarot there so make sure you come join anyway that is not the point the point is why i'm making this video is i'm making a response video to kellyanne maddox's i forgot the title but it was the video about accessing archetypes for self-love and i really love that video i love archetypes i love storytelling i love character tropes and how you can use archetypes to access power and to embody um different aspects of power and to use that to your own advantage and your own leveling up so i wanted to make like a response video on that because i that got me that video got me thinking so first of all it was a really interesting video um i was gonna summarize it but <laughs> i kind of just want to like get to uh, what i what i want to what i want to say but yeah so anyway <laughs> i'm gonna summarize it anyway or just at least like uh, in general. Uh, okay, so in that video, Kellyanne talked about how you can use archetypes as a point, as as a, as a tool or as a way to access different different parts of yourself, um, access your own personal power, um, you know, on your own self-love journey. Uh, when you need it, you can call a, call forth an archetype, uh, depending on a situation, de depending on a circumstance, depending on who you need to be at that very moment, you can use archetypes to inform yourself about the way you behave, about how uh, things need to get done, about what kind of power you need to call forth, and and stuff like that. So you can use archetypes are very useful. They're very informative and transformative and insightful as well because the archetypes you're drawn to, the archetypes that kind of embody the dynamics of your life, um, that embodies your lessons, and your your shadow and your light. Uh, they, you know, they just tell you a lot about yourself and they can, they are really also really helpful and effective when you want to face uh, certain types of challenges that you know you would struggle with in particular, you can call upon certain archetypes to help you deal with those challenges. So, so yeah, Killian, I think she um, asked, um, I don't, I forgot where in the video, but basically, you know, like she talked about how she kind of, I think she encouraged us to look at the archetypes archetypes that we're drawn to and choose the archetypes that we want to work with and how you know just think about how you can use archetypes to bring more light into yourself into your practice into your self love journey etc so yeah that was the video and after the video i was like really happy because i love archetypes i was just really excited like i was really excited as soon as i saw that video so i watched that video and i was like even more excited because it got me thinking it really gave me a lot of thoughts. So first of all, I immediately started thinking about the archetypes that I'm drawn to. There's like a couple that I know already. For example, I'm really drawn to the trickster archetype because the trickster archetype is all about not belonging to a faction, um, breaking the rules sometimes, making fun of the rules and limitations and the norms. You know, the trickster doesn't belong anywhere. The trickster is just its own thing, its own person, its own spirit. It makes fun of them. Um, the things that don't work in society it makes fun of like the nonsense you know how people are always so serious kind of like the joke uh the joker in batman but not like to that villainous degree but the spirit of a trickster it, it points out the problems in society and um is like you know the trickster is a truth teller you know the trickster tells the truth and then kind of makes the truth absurd because people are just so serious and so caught up with their own drama that they are unable to connect with the truth so that's why i love the trickster the trickster is always you know the, tr the trickster doesn't belong anywhere but the trickster always tells the truth in a way and the tr trickster is also a troll <laughs> you know i think it's like a really 
clever comedian because it's always like pointing out the absurdity of human circumstance and how we need to take ourselves less seriously and live from moment to moment, etc. So the trickster is one of my favorite archetypes. And another one of my favorite archetypes is the rebel uh, archetype. So for example, Candace Aberdeen from Hunger Games. Um, I can't think of another one. Um, maybe Spartacus in the TV series Spartacus because he's the rebellion leader that leads a group of uh, rebel gladiators to, you know, against the Roman Empire, which is a, a you know, like a superpower that that upholds the system of slavery that is obviously unjust. So I love the idea of a rebel. I love the archetype and character of a rebel because you can probably tell already that I'm not one for following the rules. Even like I, I seem like I can be a total Slytherin. <laughs> like I don't give a shit about rules. I hate following norms. I don't want to be the same as everybody else. But having that said, I'm still like conflicted by my inherent nature of not wanting conflict, wanting harmony, wanting peace, and wanting social roundedness in me and in everybody. So it's a really interesting dynamic. But anyway, I love the rebel archetype because I don't believe in silencing my own truths and silencing my own desires to fit into a group, which is interesting because at the same time, I'm always struggling with the desire to fit in and desire to not stand out because I grew up in an Asian country for the most part. Like I spent my first 13 years uh, in Taiwan and Taiwan is a society where, you know, I wouldn't say it's bad. It's just a different set of values, right? It's like, you know, that values harmony, that values uh, non-confrontations and that values uh, allowing everybody to save face, which has its pros and cons. But in Western society, it's more about individuality and speaking your truth and expressing yourself, etc. So I think part of that is just this dynamic of like having grown up in two different cultures and it's always like in clash. Uh, it's always like clashing. So yeah, but I think even when I was in Taiwan, I was like, I was just not really good with authority internally. Like I was like the good kid, you know, I was like the good goody two shoe, like sitting quietly with my legs, you know, like really neatly, my hands on my knees. And I was like a good girl <laughs> in uh, back in Asia. But inside I was just like a rebel. I was just like, I don't want to do this. Like sometimes I would just, I remember thinking back and I would just be questioning my teachers. I would be like, why do I have to do this? This makes no sense. Why do I have to go participate in a competition that I think I would suck at? Just because you think I'm tall enough to do like a high jump. Yeah, it was a high jumping competition. And they all like, the teacher appointed me because I was the tallest girl in class. Which was really dumb because I am definitely not the athletic person in class. But they appointed me anyway because I was the tallest girl. So I was appointed to go represent the girls in the high jump category for the school competition. And that was just completely absurd and I just like rebelling against it, but I was like too young to like actually do anything. But anyway, that's a, number, a different story. I love the rebel archetype because I hate following the rules. I think I will follow rules when it makes sense, when it's fair, when it serves me, when it's considerate, but when it's like really stupid rules that seeks to oppress my individuality, that seeks to... It's like a rule just for the sake of a rule. I'm just like, fuck this. Like, this makes no sense. I don't want to do it. And having grown up uh, and worked on my confidence and assertiveness and everything, I've gotten better at navigating those situations. But for the most part, I my life is not really dramatic. But anyway, I love the rebel archetype. So that's my second favorite archetype. And I also... I think those two are my favorite, to be honest. And I think I also love the inner child archetype. Um, one of the reasons why I love Peter Pan so much, because he is iconic inner child character. He's also a trickster, also kind of a rebel. So Peter Pan is like, he's like, he's my dude. Okay, I love Peter Pan. I love Peter Pan. He does throw tantrums. Oh, so that's like the only part that I didn't, I don't like about him, but I don't hate him for it. It's kind of just part of his character, but I love Peter Pan. I love the inner child archetype. I am living the inner child. You know, like I remember seeing like Pamela's um, Crystal Unicorns Tarot. I saw lots of unboxing. Everybody says the same thing. It's like my inner child is jumping out. And I'm just like, I don't understand why it has to jump out. I don't understand why 
you know, you can't just be like this all the time. <laughs> I'm just like, this is literally my life. I don't need to activate that inner child. This is, I just wear it. This is, it's oozing out of my pores as we speak. Um, it just, I love fun. I love colors. I literally, like, when I recently decluttered my room and redecorated a little bit, I had to go to the children's section to shop some of my furniture because the adult sections were so boring. It was just like all beige and gray and modern and black, but when you go to the children's section, it's all pastels and fun. It was really, I was really sad when I found this desk. It was perfect. It was white with like turquoise, like teal blue. There's like these little trays on the legs. You can put your phones there, but it's a freaking children's desk and it's so small. And it's like 90 centimeters and I can't use it as a huge ass adult, which was really sad. But I love the inner child character. I love, I believe in always having fun, always expressing yourself playfully, always enjoying life, enjoying the freedom of being yourself, not caring about who, uh, what other people think of you, seeing the world with imagination and wonder. That's what inner child is about. I love the inner child archetype. So those three archetypes I know. Like, I know these three are my archetypes. I think there's a couple of other ones that I like, uh, but they're not really prominent, but these three are like my, the trio that defines my heart. But there's actually one archetype that I've always been sort of aware of, but just never really consciously registered it as an archetype that I identify with. Which is re really interesting because this is actually the biggest archetype that I sort of embody or that I often often imagine or daydream myself into like stepping into that archetype or stepping into that role. And I just never really noticed it. I mean, I did notice it, but I just didn't think of it as an archetype that reveals a lot about me or that reveals um, sort of my life lessons and the way I do things and the way I see things. And that, that was very interesting to realize after watching Kelly and Maddox's video. And you may be wondering what that archetype is, and I will tell you. That archetype is the warrior princess archetype. <laughs> it's, 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 okay, I'm gonna explain. So, throughout my entire life, even now sometimes, but when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, after I, I became an adult, now as an adult, I've always um, daydreamed about or dreamed about being a warrior princess. And I think earlier, in my earlier rebellious days as a teenager, when I was like really edgy, I kind of didn't like the idea of wanting to be a princess because that seems to be saying like you want to be feminine and helpless you just want this man to rescue you or you're you know um anyway but i've always been obs obsessed i realized with this particular archetype and i didn't really know why i, I mean now i know because i've done some reflection on it but it was just very interesting to realize that oh i actually been this archetype has been in my in my imagination, in my subconscious, in my in my inner workings for a very, 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 very long time, ever since I was a kid. And you know some girls who dream about being a princess, you know, being adored, dressing up in beautiful clothes and maybe jewelry and maybe um, having lots of talents like singing or dancing, you know, very princessy stuff. And I think to a degree I did dream that, but for as long as I could remember, that was never the princess that I imagined myself to be. I was always the princess, but I was always the warrior. I could also kick ass. Like, in my, okay, I'm like, I have a really active imagination, okay? In my, when I don't have anything to do, when I'm just falling asleep, I would be in, a, in an imaginary kingdom in this fictional universe of my own imagination where I will be the leader of a kingdom. I will be the princess warrior and I will be freaking, I will be like the leader that is beloved by her people and celebrated by her people. <laughs> a little bit cringy, I know. But at the same time, she's also an amazing military leader that she leads her army. She leads her army at the front. She defeats demons and she fights like evil with like legendary weapons and she's also like a really kick-ass mage and everything so that's always been my 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 who i would be if i were born into this imaginary kingdom that's how i entertain myself in my daydreaming that's how 
you know, that's how, that's the stories I tell about myself in my imagination. And, <clears throat> okay, I know sharing daydreams could be a little bit cringy, but I'm going to unpack this. I'm going to explain why I really, I've, I, I've always loved this archetype. So I think I have a really interesting relationship with the princess archetype. So not princess warrior, just the princess archetype. So I think traditionally speaking, or just the cultural understanding of a princess is that a princess is often objectified. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure a lot of the feminists would hate the princess archetype because it seems to delineate this helplessness, you know, usually in traditional romantic shivers, um, uh, you know, tells about chivalry is usually the knight rescues the princess from some kind of beast or evil person and the princess never really has any agency. She doesn't really take charge of her own destiny. She's just a pretty thing to be rescued. She's a prize to be won. She's objectified. Maybe she has a talent or two. Um, you know, she can sing, she could dance, um, she could drop her can handkerchief real gracefully, but she doesn't do anything else. So I think there's this kind of cultural baggage surrounding the princess archetype. And and I think with the princess archetype, I've just been thinking about my own self love journey and my relationship with the princess archetype that I now come to realize that I actually had a relationship with it, was that I think, you know, it makes sense for me to relate to the archetype because I grew up, I guess, as a princess, not as in like in luxury or that I was like um, pampered, but I was well loved by my parents. Like they treated me like a princess, like all parents would. You know, I was well loved and celebrated. I was adored by my parents. Um, I was, I have really grew up with a really loving family. So I think in that regard, I grew up as a princess. You know, I would, I would say that I grew up as a princess, but definitely not like. I didn't grow up in shining jewels or whatever, but I grew up with lots of love and adoration and celebration. And also I grew up um, with, you know, developing different artistic talents. So I think in that regard, I kind of grew up like a princess. So I think I can relate to the princess archetype to that regard. But then here's the twist. So after I immigrated from Taiwan to Canada, you know, that was when teenagers are really struggling to find their identity. And that was when I started to find my identity. But that was also when I struggled with the insecurity of having to learn a new language, <laughs> not being able to express myself. Words and language were always a big part of my identity back when I was like in Taiwan. But after I moved here, I couldn't really speak English properly in the first year or two. My English was pretty good, but I just couldn't express all my ideas and I couldn't communicate myself properly. Plus, I was really socially anxious. I was really shy. I, did, I just didn't know how to carry myself forward. So I think I struggle a lot with feeling insecure and unconfident about who I was at the time. And I also struggle with body image issues. And you know, I didn't think I looked pretty enough. I didn't think I was skinny enough, even though I'm pretty skinny, <laughs> but I didn't fit the skinny ideal in, in Asian countries. Like you were supposed to have these anime girl skinny legs. You're supposed to dress in these cute mini, mini skirts or whatever, or school girl uniform, like the kawaii, right? Didn't fit in all of those none of those feminine standards of uh, standards of feminine beauty, I guess. So I kind of rejected that in myself. I didn't think I was pretty enough. So I guess subconsciously that was connected to not looking princessy enough. Cause you know, princess is a feminine ideal too, right? Cause you know, it's a princess is a ideal of beauty in a certain way. It's like, you know, it represents that this sort of, um, your, it, it, it represents that you are a figure to be seen and you embody beauty, you embody talent and you embody, you're kind of like the, you know, like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Archetypally speaking, the princess embodies all of those things. And I rejected that in myself. I rejected that archetype in myself because I think I wanted to be celebrated and not just by my family because they are, they, they've always done that, right? I, I grew up well loved and well celebrated, but um, I think I wanted to be accepted by my peers. I wanted to be celebrated and adored by my peers. I wanted to be myself. Not as in like, I want to be a princess or a queen bee and just like rule over them all and just like have them adore me. But I just wanted to be accepted like everybody else. I just wanted to feel like I'm liked because I am who I am. I, I'm socially accepted because I am just the person that I am. And I was really insecure about that. Like people didn't necessarily reject me, but it was just like, a lot of it was internalized rejection and I didn't really know how to deal with it and I rejected that archetype. So 
it was interesting coming to realization that I had a relationship like that with the princess archetype. Like, I think I wanted to embody that feminine ideal because I have come to realize recently or just the past couple of years that I am kind of like, I do have like an adorable cutesy streak. <laughs> I know it's kind of gross to say that about myself, but I just, I kind of have that as part of my personality. Like, I'm really goofy. I like, I like cute things and, and I have this really strong inner child. And I think the princess archetype is also a little bit related to the inner child because archetypally speaking um without you know if you if you don't look at the character development of a princess in many stories a princess represents like a girl child right you know the princess is to be married off so she could become queen she could become the wife of another man so in a way she's like a girl child and i think i have i have such a deep connection with the princess archetype because she represented who I wanted to be, I wanted to be uh, recognized as a, a an attractive and feminine person. I wanted to be celebrated in that way. I wanted to be myself in that way, but I rejected that in myself. And I was also like a girl child because I was a girl child. <laughs> and I think I did struggle with powerlessness in many of my relationships, even after I grew up. Like I struggled with being really passive and I struggle with being a doormat, I guess. And that was in a sense traditionally what a princess represented. The princess is kind of like, she didn't have any agency. So I think the princess archetype encapsulates a lot of interesting things for me, you know? And moving on to the warrior archetype, the warrior archetype is the exact opposite of the princess. The warrior archetype is masculine, action-packed, action-oriented, um, assertive, powerful, um, has a ton of agency. Uh, they're the one who's fighting uh, the monsters or fighting at the front lines, right? They are, they have so much power and it's just such a stark contrast to the princess archetype. And I wonder why I paired those two together in my mind. I wonder why that archetype attracted me so much. If you think about um, princess archetypes or queen, oh no, uh, if you think about princess, warrior princesses or warrior queens, you might think about Amazons, you might think about Wonder Woman, you might think about, what are some other examples? Right now I can only think about think of the Amazons and Wonder Woman, which is an, who is an Amazon. Um, you know, like, I, I wonder why I paired those two archetypes together. Um, I wonder why I wanted to be both of those things. I wonder why, what those two things mean meant for me. So I already explained about the princess archetype. I already kind of mused about the princess archetype. And the thing I always wanted to embody the warrior spirit as well, because I wanted to be strong. Like, I wanted to be a masculine... Um, not as not as in like I want to be a dude or I want to be a tomboy, but I just want to embody the the strength and the power and the resilience and the assertiveness and certainty of a warrior archetype. I want to know like I want to know how to kick ass. I want to have power over another person, not as in like dominating, but you know what a warrior symbolizes? It's physical dominance over your enemy or over something else because you have the ability to slay that thing. You can fight it. You can physically change the the form of whatever it is that's in front of you. You have the strength to do that. So I think the warrior embodies that for me. You know, I've always wanted to be the warrior because I wanted to speak up for myself. I wanted to take things into my own hands. I didn't want to depend on anybody. I didn't want to just passively watch my sufferings go by and not say a word. I wanted to be aware. I wanted to wake up, you know, like warrior is so, the warrior archetype is so visceral. Like just imagine a warrior in a battlefield, every single cut, every single injury, every single like clash with the enemy is just so visceral. It's so physical. That contact is just real. I think there's a deep desire for me to be real throughout my whole life. I wanted to wake up. I wanted to feel all the sensations. I wanted to say that I'm in pain when I was in pain. I wanted to feel that when something is cut into me, when someone hurts me, when something, when someone says something stupid or passive aggressive or something that hurt me, that made me feel pain and that made me suffer. I wanted to say that I felt that because one of the things I struggle with throughout my whole life is being really numb, being a doormat, <laughs> sort of just disconnecting from my own feelings about, especially the negative feelings, like disconnecting from what I was going through so I could sort of bypass it, so I could stay in certain relationships, so I could, so I, so I didn't have to face that I was unhappy. 
And that was one of the things I struggle with. And the warrior archetype is just, I think, it, it embodies the desire to break free from that and embodies the desire to be strong and to speak up for myself. <clears throat> and going back to the princess archetype, I think at the same time, I didn't want to completely be the warrior archetype because I there is softness in me as well. Like, I, I cherish all the... Like, right now, like, I appreciate all the parts about me that's compassionate, that's giving and forgiving, that's feminine, that's that's adorable, that's, you know, like, I now I appreciate all those things about me. I think I, it's it's really funny, like, this dynamic, like, I wanted to be the princess, I wanted to be well-liked, <clears throat> I wanted to be adored, and I also wanted to be the warrior. But at the same time, I didn't want to be feminine because I rejected that in myself. I didn't want to be a princess, so I turned to the warrior. But I also didn't want to be the warrior because I wanted to be well liked. I wanted to be this figure of like, like, <laughs> like I wanted to, you know, I, I want to step into my femininity as well. Like I wanted to feel beautiful. So it's this interesting dy dynamic of feminine, masculine, princess versus warrior, and. You know, I've always been struggling with those two things, and I think maybe it doesn't, it, I want to say that maybe this is something that I always have to struggle with, but I don't want to say struggle, but maybe it's just something that I have to constantly balance, because I want to be feminine, and strong, and beautiful, and badass, and all those things. I want to be the trickster. I want to be, you know, I want to joke around once in a while. I want to kind of play pranks on people. I want to be playful. I don't want to follow the rules or the norms. I want to be my own version of myself. And I've come to realize that the warrior princess archetype is actually a pretty good encapsulation of who I am. I mean, even my name in Chinese is a warrior princess name. My last name Tan or or Zhan in Chinese means war or to battle or to fight. And my second character in Chinese and my name in Chinese is Ming, which means clever and smart. And also my English name Kimberly means the person who was born on royal grass. Literally it's the name of a warrior princess. It's interesting how your existence has so many clues about who you are and you didn't even know. And not to mention that another thing that I was thinking about <laughs> that was like a really abrupt transition, but another thing I was thinking about um, was now that I'm like almost 30, <laughs> how come I'm still identifying with the princess, like the warrior princess and not the warrior queen? Like I thought about how come I never really identify with a lot of the more, more maternal or more womanly uh, archetypes like goddesses or or uh, goddesses basically like the 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 you know like the less girly <laughs> feminine archetypes um you know i thought about that which is interesting i think maybe it's just because i've never i, I have, haven't really stepped into the role of a mother the closest that i have been a mother is taking care of my cat i'm a cat mom but i've never gave birth to a child i've never taken care of a child i've never been a mother so maybe that's why i've never really felt maybe I just never really experienced the typical narrative of a woman or what those goddesses represent because throughout my whole life I think I've been more of a princess in the sense that it's more of a pursuit of myself and what I want to achieve and when you think about queens just in the traditional sense in a literal sense the queen is 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 has to take care of the welfare of her people the, the queen has to is responsible for the kingdom and so far i've just been responsible for what i want to pursue and of course my family um but it's in a sense my role so far has been more like a princess it's been it's more my whole life has been more about my own becoming and not about taking care of a kingdom or taking care of a family or or you know i've never really stepped into that role so i think that's how i explained it you know that's that's why i think i never really related to the archetype of a queen I mean, I draw the Empress from Tarot sometimes, and there the times that I really resonated with that card is when I ask about my cat. <laughs> like, other than that, Empress is more about creativity and abundance for me. Like, it, has, it hasn't, haven't really experienced the motherhood or the womanly aspect of it when I have to care for the welfare of others. So I think maybe that's why I've been sort of more related, like relating to the role of a princess, even though I'm almost 30, 
Um, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's kind of my explanation. Um, yeah, which is very interesting. Um, I might do another video on, like, archetypes with goddesses and gods, because I, I, I have some thoughts. I have some thoughts about that, too, because if you think about it, normally people who work with archetypes or gods or goddesses, usually we work with goddesses more. But we wouldn't really consciously try to invite a god in, probably because it's, like, a step away from the patriarchal overarch that's been sort of dominating the the narrative for the past um couple past maybe a couple hundred years but uh, maybe it's just like the need to reconnect with the feminine archetype but anyway that's another video Whew. okay that was very very one track long-winded video but i just wanted to get that out there i wanted to film this video because i really felt like sharing it with you and um yeah i think that's it uh that's my little exploration with the warrior princess archetype and what i realized about myself and also just why i would have that connection and, and etc uh and yeah so i wonder like how about you do you like the trickster archetype like me or the rebel archetype or the inner child maybe the warrior princess or the warrior queen do you identify with the amazon do you identify with princess or queen more and what do you think about that topic like what do you think some people would wouldn't really connect with the narrative of a queen or a woman or maybe it's just that um you know i just i didn't really i kind of grew up or just existed in my own bubble in a sense because you know i've always just been pursuing what i wanted to do so my own becoming right so in a way that's a bubble i don't know but yeah what do you think about it like i'm really curious because I've never really, this is kind of like, I'm just beginning to explore this princess, princess, queen, um, girl, um, woman, or more, or older woman archetype. Um, because when you, when you think about the feminine archetypes, there's like the girl, the maiden, and then the mother, or in the chrome, right? Something like that. It's like different ages. And I haven't, I haven't really, <laughs> maybe it's just, maybe it's just a timeline thing. Anyway, so I'm really curious about what you think. Let me know in the comments below. What are your favorite archetypes? Have you watched Kellyanne's like archetype video yet? Um, what do you think? What did you think of it? You will probably comment on her video, but um, yeah, did did it inspire you? <laughs> did this video inspire you? Uh, what are your? Do you like? Do you, do you know? Like, do you do you? How do you feel about the warrior princess archetype? How about the warrior queen? I'm really really curious. So if you have any thoughts about that topic, leave it leave it down in the comments below and yeah I think that's it and before I go I just want to let you know that I am launching my tarot spare machine course very very soon I'm going to put I'm going to be putting out more videos about how to create tarot spreads how you can um, practice drawing your own cartoons and how you can find your style and also just a, a video about telling about the course so I'm really excited about that uh, it's actually available for pre-order so if you want to be one of the early birds um, before I started, before I start all the crazy promo, you can go pick one up on my website. Um, it's 25% off with the promo code. Um, it's listed right next to the checkout button. So just make sure you look on my website and then you find the promo code there. It's 25% off. And yeah, so make sure you check that out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. And um, I will see you, I will see you in my next video. Bye and join my group. I am doing more live videos there now, so make sure you join my group. So let us.